In this video of hypothesis testing students, we are going to learn of what is hypothesis first, then what is uh, null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis, alpha error, beta error, p-value, different tests like t-test, ANOVA, chi-square testing. Let us try to dig in deeper and see what are the important concepts that we should know. Let us see what is hypothesis testing. It's a statistical method that is used in making statistical decisions using experimental data. Hypothesis testing is actually an assumption that we make about the population parameter. So there are three methods students use to test the hypothesis. The one we have the traditional method, then we have the p-value method and then the confidence interval method. Now let us try to understand what is null hypothesis first. Null hypothesis H0. It's a statistical hypothesis testing that assumes that the observation is just due to chance. It's a hypothesis of no difference, H0. So in hypothesis testing, null hypothesis denoted by letter H0, which shows that there is no difference between two population means or two parameters. Now the another hypothesis we have student is called as the alternative hypothesis or H1. It is opposite of the null hypothesis, shows that the observation are the result of a real effect. It states that there is difference between two population means or parameters. Let us see what is level of significance. The level of significance student refers to the degree of significance in which we accept or we reject the null hypothesis. So in hypothesis testing, 100% accuracy is not possible for accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis. Therefore, we select a level of significance here that is usually 1% and 5%. After the significance level is chosen, a critical value is selected from the table for the appropriate test statistics. The critical value is a value that separates the critical from the non-critical region. Critical region is the range of values of the test value that indicate there is significant difference and that the null hypothesis should be rejected. Critical region is the rejection region. If you look at the Bell's curve here, you can see this is a normal curve and you can see the critical values. They're coming to this point and this blue portion here on the tails, both the side of tails is the rejection region. Now the non-critical region is the non-rejection region. It's a range of values of the test value that indicates that the difference was probably due to chance. That means your null hypothesis was true and should not be rejected. How would we know about the critical or the non-critical region? Should we accept or reject the null hypothesis? We do one tailed and two tailed test for it. One tailed test shows that the null hypothesis be rejected when the test value is in the critical region on one side of the mean. It may be either a right tail test or a left tail test depending on the direction of inequality or the alternative hypothesis. But for the two tail test, the null hypothesis should be rejected when the test value is in either of two critical region or two rejection region. Now let us talk about the errors in hypothesis testing students where we have the type 1 error and the type 2 error. So type 1 error occurs if one rejects the null hypothesis when it is actually true. While type 2 error occurs if one does not reject the null hypothesis when actually it should be rejected because when the null hypothesis is actually false. So in hypothesis testing, the type 1 error is the beta error and in hypothesis testing, the type 2 error is called as the beta error. In hypothesis testing, the type 1 error is denoted by alpha and type 2 error is denoted by beta. So in hypothesis testing also the normal curve that shows the critical region is called as the alpha region while in hypothesis testing the normal curve that shows the acceptance region is called as the beta region. You can see the possible outcome of a hypothesis testing here students. The statistical decision you took is not to reject H0 because H0 is true. That's a correct decision. Here the confidence is 1 minus alpha. Now if your statistical de uh, decision is to reject the null hypothesis but when H0 was true that begins the type 1 error. Type 1 error we know it's denoted by letter alpha. The second one is you are rejecting, you are not rejecting the null hypothesis, that's your statistical decision, when actually the H0 was false, that is type 2 error, that's a beta error. And this one is rejecting the null hypothesis when H0 is false, that means it's a correct decision. For correct decision, power equals to 1 minus beta. What are different steps we have in conducting the hypothesis testing? Firstly, you state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. You choose the level of significance, alpha, and the sample size that is usually denoted by letter N. Determine the test statistics and the sampling distribution. Determine the critical values. Determine the rejection and the non-rejection regions. Collect the data and compute the value of the 
t-test make the statistical decision and state the conclusion now let us see student what is p value p value or probability value is the probability of getting a sample statistics or a mean extreme sample statistics in the direction of h1 when h0 is actually true so it's the actual area under the standard distribution curve that represents the probability of a particular sample statistics or a more sample statistics occurring if the h0 is true steps for a p value method is state the null hypothesis h0 and the alternate hypothesis that is h1 choose the level of significance alpha and the sample size determine the test statistics and sampling distribution compute the test value determine the p value that's probability value make a statistical decision and state the conclusion if p value is less than equal to alpha you reject the null hypothesis and the p value is greater than alpha do not reject the null hypothesis that means to accept the null hypothesis students if your p value is less than 0.01 you reject the null hypothesis when you reject the null hypothesis means there is difference is highly significant that means you have to accept the alternative hypothesis but if the p value is greater than 0.01 and less than 0.05 then you reject the null hypothesis difference is significant again but if the p value is greater than 0.05 and less than equal to 0.10 consider a consequence of having a type 1 error before rejecting the null hypothesis but if p value is greater than 0.10 do not reject the null hypothesis that means difference is not significant now the another method or concept of hypothesis testing is the relationship between hypothesis testing and confidence interval so this is basically summarized into two and the confidence interval contains the hypothesized mean do not reject the null hypothesis and when the confidence interval does not contain the hypothesized means then you have to reject the null hypothesis now student let us talk about the sampling method to understand the sampling method first of all we should know what is sampling this is a procedure by which some members of the population are selected as representative of the entire population so those representative are considered as a sample for your study the subgroups thus selected to represent the whole population is known as a sample for example if your population of 1000 people it's impossible to do your study on each and every 1000 people out of them so you can just take 10 out of them so it is representative of the entire 1000 population and they are considered as a sample so several methods are used for the sampling to an unbiased sample drawn from the population so sampling students is divided into two categories one is the probability sampling and the second is the non probability sampling so probability sampling it's any method of sampling that utilizes some form of the random selection so procedure should assure that the different units in the population have equal chances or equal probability of being chosen while the non probability sampling it does not involve the random selection it may or may not represent the population well and non probability sampling is used only when researcher lack a sampling frame for the population so let's let us see what are different types of probability sampling we have it includes a simple random method it includes a systematic sampling the stratified sampling the cluster sampling and the multi stage sampling now when we talk about the simple random sampling in which the sample is selected so that each population sample combination has equal probability of being chosen so this is also called as unrestricted random sampling where all the population for example from uh, 100 students randomly you are selecting five students so each of the student has equal chances of getting selected it's just a simple random sampling or the lottery method is just a simple random sampling that we have in this population in this method the population element can enter the sample only once if it is without replacement and the unit once selected is not returned to the population before the next draw like your lottery method but when you have simple random sampling with replacement the population units may enter the sample more than once like table of random numbers or random number selection using calculator or computers lottery method they are all example of simple random sampling now what is systematic random sampling systematic random sampling is also called as quasi random sample when you divide the population size by the sample size to get the sampling fraction and then you select a random number between 1 and the sampling fraction that we are getting that will be your first sampling unit for example if you have a population of 1000 people and your sample size is 10 
So the first sampling fraction will be 100 here. Then you will select a random number between 1 and 100. Let's say you're selecting 20. This will be your first sampling unit. And then you systematically select the remaining sample unit by adding the sampling fraction. 20, then you add 100 to it because that was a sampling fraction. Then 100, 120, 120 plus 100 will be 220. That's how you are doing the systematic random sampling. Now the steadified random sampling is you're making the strata, you're making the groups first. For example, you want to know that how many schools in the United States they are studying from uh, dental decks for their preparation. So first of all, those are the groups of the school which are studying from the dental decks for their preparation. But from each school, you are selecting two students randomly. So you are doing the stratification at the same time you're doing the random selection of the students. So that becomes a stratified random sampling. So stratification means division into groups. In this method, the population is divided into number of subgroups or the strata. And from each strata, like from each dental school, a simple random sample is selected, like selecting two students from each of the group to form the required sample from the population. Now you also have the multi-stage sampling and multi-phase. So multi-stage sampling using large scale investigation where the first stage is preparation of large size sampling units, randomly selecting a certain number. And the second stage, another list is prepared from them. Then subsamples are drawn by random sampling. While the multi-phase sampling used to obtain supplementary information, certain items of the information are collected from all units of sample and other items collected only some of the sampling unit. What is cluster sampling? Each sampling unit is a collection of cluster of elements like you're using the clustering units of population like the entire school or village, entire ward. So this entire group is taken up as a sampling unit here that is cluster sampling. So convenient sampling student is also called as a haphazard or accidental sampling. It's a process of including whoever happens to be available at that time. It is used in exploratory research where the research is interested in getting an inexpensive approximation of the truth. And as the name applies, the sample is selected because they are convenient. For example, New Year's time, the mall is giving gifts to any two guests who are arriving first in the mall, like of a convenience sampling. The next type of sampling you have is the judgmental sampling. So it is a process where the researcher selects a sample based on the experience or knowledge of the group to be sampled. 